Hello everyone, welcome to Back to Gold. Today I will be explaining how to use the AI navigation tool from Unity. So many times it may happen that you need an object to follow you around, or you want like enemies to follow you so they can kill you, or you want to find the best way, the best path to go from point A to point B. So to do this, we will use the navigation system from Unity. So I have built a simple scene where I have our character and a destination where it wants to go on a plane. So for uh, to start setting up our navigation, we have to go for Window, AI, Navigation. Here we have this area where Bake, what we'll do is create a mesh where our character will be able to move on. So if we put Bake, nothing will happen. Why is this? For things to be selected as somewhere where our character can walk on, it has to be set, it has to be set as here navigation static. So each object that you want it to be able to be walked on, you have to select it as navigation static. So that's what we're going to do. Great. Now if we bake this, now, great, so here you can see it has been baked, and you can see that here, for example, in the border, it won't be able to walk here on the board. Now let's do a simple script for our character to move from the his position to the destination. So we go to our character and create a simple script called navigation and we create an ad. What else? What we're going to need is our object that is going to move, our character, has to be a navigation agent. So this is going to be a nav mesh agent. So we add a component, component nav mesh agent. This means that it's an it's an object that is going to move. So now if we go to our script, what we want to do, we want our nav, nav mesh agent to move to a destination. So for that we're, we're going to need a variable that is a nav mesh agent. It's going to be the same character. And we're going to be a we're, we're going to need a variable that says um where it wants to go. Private transform um, destination. Destination. So for us to modify it on the editor, we're going to do a serialized field and same here. Now constantly in the update, we want our object to go to our nav mesh agent. For this, to, to our destination. So our nav mesh agent, we set its destination to destination dot position, and that's it, basically. We have our script. Let's first set our variables. Here nav mesh agent will just drag and drop, and our destination will be the ball. There we go. And now we put play. And our agent will go to our destination. Now let's do something else. Let's add an obstacle in the middle. So there we go. We have a cube in the middle. What happens if we put play now? So why does this happen? Why does it go around? Because if we look to our nav mesh in this moment, it doesn't see that there's an obstacle in the middle. How do we make it see if there's an obstacle in the middle? We again select the obstacle, go into inspector and set it as navigation static. And we bake again the navigation, so nav uh, the nav mesh. So let's bake it. Now you see that it sees that there is, that it can't pass through here. So if now we put play, 
it will go around it and reach its destination. Perfect. Okay, so let's do more the details now. What is this agent radius? If we look here around this obstacle, we will see that there is a space where it's not th the mesh isn't there, right? So this has to do with the mesh, with the radius. If we put it smaller and we bake it, then you will be able to see that the mesh is bigger now. The bigger the radius, the smaller the mesh will be. The smaller the radius, the bigger the mesh will be. The, the more places the character will be able to move through. So let's do another example here. I have an other obstacle. Let's set them as static. We change children too. That's a faster way to do it either too. And let's bake it. Here the object will be able to pass through because the radio is 0 0.1. But if we put it 0.5 and we bake it, then the object won't be able to pass through these two. It will have to go around. Now, what is this agent height? Let's activate this other obstacle. Set it as static. Yes, change children. And go to it and bake. So if it's if it's really tall, it can't pass under this object, but if we make it smaller, then it can pass under this object. Now, what is max slope? Here, what it means, just look here and look here, what it means is how s small the slope has to be for it to go up on it. So if it's, if we set it to 45, 45 degrees is the maximum it will be able to be on. It will be able to climb. If it's less, it will be able to climb it, and if it's more, then it, we won't, it won't be able to climb it. So let's set this one a little bit higher, so for it to be... If we make this one something like that, which is much more than 45 degrees, and we bake this, then you'll see that here the nav, the nav mesh is created, but here it isn't. If I make it a smaller slope and bake it, it is created. Great. Now, the last thing here, we have the step height. Let's activate it, set it as static, and here. Here we have steps. What is this for? So, the step height means here we have a uh, 0.4 of altitude between each step. So here's a 0.4, here's a 0.4, and here's a 0.4. So if we bake it, it will be able to go up the steps. But what if we make the step height a little bit smaller? Like you can only go through steps that have this altitude of 0.2. So if we bake it, it can't, won't be able to go up up the stairs. So what is drop height? Drop height means that it can be on top of something and will be able to create links from one point to the ground or wherever if it has this kind of drop height. So it's, let's put one. If we create a one of drop height you will see here it will be able to drop from this step but it won't be able to drop from this step because it's really high. So if we do a drop height of 9, for example, now it will be able to drop from any part of the steps and from any part of these cubes too. Now the jump distance has to do with jumping from one block to another in horizontal direction. So here right now if we break it, 
it can't it doesn't create a link from block to block but if we make it a bigger jump distance for example four and we bake it then you see it creates a jump dis a jump link from this block to this block so let's try this out if we put our destination in one point and our character in the other it will be able to go from side to side without any problems. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Subscribe for more content like this.